Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We've switched over to the programming language C, and we're looking at the digital I.O. of the MSP430 and how to program it. In this video, we're going to look at reading from inputs and go back to the concept of polling. Okay, so remember when we use any port, we need to do a bunch of configuration in order to make that port set up the way that we want. And so the things that we typically do are we got to set the direction register. Remember, an input requires the direction register bit to be a zero. Uh, since on our launchpad board we have single pull, single throw switches, <clears throat> we need a pull up or pull down resistor. In our case, we need a pull up resistor. So we enable the on chip resistors by uh, setting a one in the resistor enable port resistor enable configuration register corresponding to the bit we're using. And then we also have to set the polarity of the resistor using the secondary function of the P out register. And then finally, we can just simply read from uh, the input register. Now, it's a little interesting <clears throat> in C because we don't have necessarily a bitwise read like we do in assembly where we can test a bit by doing a bit instruction. So what we do is we typically bring it into a, uh, bring it into a variable and then we clear out all the bits that we care about. So if you think about what we're going to do, let's create a program where we did just like we did when we first started looking at this in assembly. Let's push a button <clears throat> and have the LED toggle. And so in order to do that, our flowchart is going to be we're going to initialize the ports. That's LED1 and S1. And then we're going to read in the entire port. OK, so remember, LED1 is on port four and it's on bit one. And so we're going to read port four and we'll store it into a variable called SW1. Now, SW1 is going to be a variable. It's going to be, you know, 16 bits wide, uh, well, 8 bits wide or 16 bits wide, potentially. And what we're going to do is we need to clear all the other bits in the SW1 variable, leaving only bit 1. And the reason that we can do that is that we can then look at SW1 as an entire variable and say, is it 0 or is it not 0? If it's 0, that meant that all the bits, including bit one, which was the switch, was a zero. And so then that means the button was not pressed. So the button, there's no press, okay? <laughs> uh, but then if it is pressed, you will see, oh, excuse me, I said that wrong. If it's not a one, if it's a zero, oh, Jesus. If it's a zero, that means the button was pressed, okay? And we can toggle the LED and then return, okay? But if, it's, if it is unpressed, that means the pull-up resistor is pulling it up and will go this way. And so we do this by checking whether this value is a zero. Think about the case where it's not pressed. All the bits in this variable are zero, except for bit one, which is where the button is. And so it's allowing bit position one happens to be a one. So you basically have zero, 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 one, zero. And as evaluated in, in its entirely, entirety, this SW1 is not zero. So it will go back up here. Okay, so let's code this up. All right, so go ahead and fire up a new CCS project. And here we go. So I'll go file new, file new CCS project. And let's go ahead and we'll call this C underscore dig IO inputs in polling S1. Okay, empty only. <clears throat> fire that up. Okay, and then we are ready to go. It's going to bring up our main.c. Okay, so here's our skeleton code, and we're off and running. Okay, so first thing we want to do is do some setup. So let's set up ports. And first first and foremost, let's do uh, set p1, p1 bit 0 to an output, and that's LED1. Okay, so then what I do there is I'm going to do this instruction. I'm going to do... Port one dir bitwise or with a mask called bit zero. So that's what sets that bit. Okay. And then let's go ahead and we'll clear LED one. So let's do clear LED one initially. Okay. So now what I do there is I just flat out write to it. So I go P1 out and I am going to do a clear. Now remember, this is a bitwise and. But in order to get the mask correct, I have to put the tilde on it. So that's going to use the same mask for bit zero, which is all zeros except for bit position zero. 
and then it'll invert it. So then I get all ones except for a zero on bit position zero. And when I do an AND on that, it leaves all the other bits alone except for bit zero, and bit zero gets hammered to a zero. Okay? <clears throat> all right, now let's do port for input. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to do, we're going to set P for bit one to an input. And this is where switch one is. Okay, so now I can come back here and say port for dir, and I need to clear that bit. So I'm going to do a bitwise and with a tilde, and that's going to, and I'm going to use the bit one mask, and that gets my, that clears bit one of port four direction. And now we got to get some, uh, let's do the pull up resistor. So let's enable a pull up resistor. So I'm going to do port four ren, and in this one I need to set bit position one in this register. And I'm going to go bitwise or with a mask called bit one. And what this does is it enables resistor. And then I'm gonna do port four out. And I need to do the secondary function of port four out or the output, yeah, port four out register, which sets the polarity of the resistor. So now I did that and I do to set resistor to pull, to pull up, okay? All right, and then I'm going to do, and let's turn on the I.O. system. So PM5 CTL0, and I need to clear the bit. So I do a bitwise AND with a tilde on the mask. And there it is. So then this is called turn on digital I.O. Turn on digital I.O. Now what's cool about this is we are using all of the masks that were defined and register names that were defined in the MSP430 header file. So we don't have to keep track of these things. Okay, so here we go. So let's think about how we're gonna do this. I am going to create a while loop that is going to implement our, uh, basically implement this. So I'm gonna get our, <clears throat> get our flow chart on the screen here. And so I wanna read in port four, okay? But, but I'm in an infinite loop now. Okay, so I need an infinite loop. So I'm gonna do a while one, and that's gonna represent these this infinite looping structure. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here, and do this, and now I'm off and running. So the first thing I'm gonna do is read in port four. So all I do is I do an assignment from uh, port four into a variable called S1. Okay, so I'm gonna go port four in. Okay, so this is gonna be read port four. Now, where did where did S1 come from? Well, I have to define that. So I have to come up here and let's make it an integer <clears throat> and let's make it SW1, okay? And we don't need to initialize it because we'll read from it Im immediately. And so now that I've got that, I've read the entire uh, port for register or port. So I, I got to clear out all the bits. So all I do to do that is I do a switch one and I'm going to do a bitwise and operation with a tilde in order to clear out everything except for bit one. Okay, so I cleared all bits except bit one. Oh, oh excuse me, excuse me. I want you to think about this. This is a little different than what we're talking about. I am going to and it with bit one. Okay, so bit one has a mass that looks like this, right? So it's going to be all zero. Okay, when I and that with anything, it clears all the bits except for the bit position that I care about. Okay, so when I do that, nothing is left except for whatever the value of bit one is. Okay, so this is the clear all bits except bit one. Okay, or I could say more accurately, SW1. All right, so that's it. That's my steps to now I can look at that thing. And so now check this out. I can use an if statement to do polling. So watch this, if I go if SW1 is equal to a zero, that means there's no press, or excuse me, excuse me, there is a press. That means press, press. So now what we need to do is what am I trying to do? Well, uh, let's turn on LED one. So let's do port one out, and I'm gonna do a, a bitwise or with a mask called bit zero, and that's to turn on. So I'm gonna do turn on LED one, okay? So this is the program where I'm pushing it, and, and when I hold it, it's trying to go on, okay? And that's it, okay? So then otherwise, let's go else, and I'm gonna do P1 out, and I'm gonna clear it. So I do a bitwise and with the tilde, that's bit zero, and that is now going to turn off 
LED one. Okay, so that's it. I mean, that's the that's the entire program, right? So let's go ahead and see if this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if this works. So save this up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up a debugger. And I got my board plugged in and it's downloading now. Errors exist. So let's find that error. Okay, so it says port line line 12. Oh, I misspelled this. It's port for resistor enable, obviously. <laughs> okay, thank you, compiler. And so I go ahead and fire that up. And downloading, downloading, downloading. And we're ready. So close. Okay, we are not quite there yet. It's still working. Come on, buddy. There it goes. <laughs> not even, it's not there yet. Okay, here it is. Okay, so now here we are. Let's just go for the gusto, okay? So I'm gonna go run, okay? And now I go over here and it's, in theory, it's in a pulling loop. And then when I press SW1, it should toggle, or it should turn on LED1. So I do that, and it turns it on. And now when I take it away, it turns it off. So there we go, there we go. There we go, there we go. There we go, there we go. Now this is perfect, this is perfect because it's doing exactly what I think. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So that, that's cool. Uh, one interesting thing about it is when I push this, I'm actually sitting in this delay loop, or not delay loop, I'm sitting in this loop forever. It's just like continually reading it. And then when I'm not pressing it, it's sitting over here, sitting over here, sitting over here. <laughs> now, if we wanted to do the toggle example, uh, that's where you press the button and it's supposed to toggle the bits. And so what I can do is I can say if, let's do that example because then this this kind of gets us back to the the whole issue with polling, which is where you need to have a you need to have a delay loop in there. So let's do this one. Instead of if it's pressed, instead of doing this hardcore turn it on, turn it off, which works pretty good, uh, let's toggle LED one and then otherwise don't do anything. So now check this code out. So this now is going to toggle it when it's pressed and I didn't even need an else statement that means I won't even uh, I don't need to worry about anything okay I won't make an assignment I guess is what I should say I won't toggle it when the button's not pressed so let's go ahead and fire this up okay so now let's run this and see what happens now when I do this I press it it's toggling right but you notice it's got that behavior again where when I hold it down it's kind of dim because it's toggling on and off, on and off, on and off. And I, when I let go, it's kind of random when it stays on or when it stays off. And so this is the case where it's like, well, it's that stupid uh, polling loop thing where I need to give delay after the polling loop so that I give time for the finger to be removed. And so now this is where, let's just do a quick for loop. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another uh, int I, and we won't initialize it this time. So let's just slap a little for loop right here to the for delay. I is equal to zero. And then we'll say I is less than 10,000 decimal. So it's not gonna be super long like FFF hex. And then we'll just go I plus plus. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this, nothing. Do nothing, okay? And all that is doing is inserting a little delay. So now let's check this out for a final kind of test. This delay doesn't necessarily, it, it works for this toggle one. We didn't need the delay when we just turned it on, turned it off. But it was cool to see. <laughs> it was cool to see both things. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go. And now when I come over here, I'm gonna go, yep, 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 yep. yep. And it's, I did 10,000, which is actually kind of fast. I could make it, uh, so if I get off quick, 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 it's pretty good. Notice that I, if I leave my finger on a little bit too much, it's unreliable because it gets through the delay loop. So I could fix that obvious, I could fix that totally by making this number a little bit bigger. But anyway, that's it. So cool. So we looked at digital inputs in C and we looked at a technique on how to read the entire port, how to mask off all the bits we don't care about by anding it with a, a mask to clear out everything else. And then just looking whether the entire variable that we re read in was either a zero or a one corresponding. And then we looked at the issue with polling when we toggle in that we need to add a delay in there. So that's it. Congratulations, you did it. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.